All right. Boom. All right. We are live on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Live, live, live. Appreciate everybody coming in. Let me sound check. Perfect. We sound good. What's going on on this Friday, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? I, I hope you had a good good Friday. And um, we're going to talk about a Ghanaian uh, sister that, that, that live in America. She took issue with black Americans going to Ghana um, and partying. Um, and, and she claimed that's all, you know, brothers and sisters was doing over there. But we'll get into that a little later. Um, while we're waiting on everyone to come on in because people don't get notifications as they should. So sometimes they want to come check uh, for the stream. Uh, we put up on the community tab, make sure I put this over here. We put on a community tab that we are looking for a journalist to come on board with us out of South Africa. Um, you must live in South Africa. You can't be here and talking about um, you South Africa. No, no, no. You got to live over there. That's the way that works. It don't hit right if you're not living there. You know, if I'm looking for somebody to live in America, then that's a different story. But we have to, you know, get a inroads in South Africa. That's part of what we're trying to do this year. Um, so, you know, definitely, you know, some people have been hitting us up and shout out to all the brothers and sisters that have been hitting us up. Um, on LinkedIn, um, putting in, you know, I, I had, you know, one, the interesting part, I had one lady, um, that interviewed me a few years ago, um, uh, on RT and I'm like, well, she don't live in, um, South Africa, but I thought it was interesting that, that she applied for that position. You know, I'm like, wow, I thought this lady was, you know, doing mainstream media. That's, that's very interesting. But anyway, um, so, you know, we will look at all the candidates and, you know, of course I'm a personally do the interviews for that. So if you are a journalist in South Africa, um, or if you just good at doing that thing and you know how, you know, study the platform is what I would say, see what we do here. We don't do traditional journalism where you're just reading a story. Um, our audience is not really with that. You know, you got to kind of, you know, have some passion about what you're doing you can't be afraid to talk about politics in South Africa. You can't be afraid. Um, you can't say, well, I can talk about the ANC, but I won't talk about the EFF or I won't talk about this. I won't talk about that one. You know, this platform is about, you know, black empowerment, um, the, the diaspora. Um, and, you know, in South Africa, definitely y'all got a lot of issues to call out and we need that here. Um, you know, y'all have the folks getting out of line. Y'all have the, um, some of the Indians getting out of line, some of the uh, Asians getting out of line, and we need you know somebody that we willing to call that out and not be afraid of that. If you're afraid of that, then you know it's not the place for you. You know maybe you can work for SABC or one of those outlets that won't call that out, right? But I believe we'll find you know the person that we need, and then you know. Um, Later down the line, we'll see what we have, you know, and, and, and I even have some other people hitting me up outside of that. And I say, oh, man, okay. So, hey, you know, holler at me. Holler at me. Just browsing. I will say this much, just browsing that's, that's saying that in the chat. I don't feel that way about no brothers and sisters moving to, to America. I don't. If they want to move to America and, you know, get their bag up and get their weight up, I'm cool with it. I'm not, trust me, I'm not, I don't have no issue with it. The only time I take issue is if you try to undermine or do something to that effect, right? Are you being disrespectful? Then I'm like, okay, we got to deal with that issue. But no, I don't, I don't take no, let me tell you something. I rather a bunch, if they on code, I rather uh, a, a million, two million, uh, black folks move here. That's on code. Listen to what I just said. That's on code. Then all these other groups coming in here and we know they coming in hostile against black folk. That's what, what I will know. And then some of the people that move here and maybe off code, sometimes they, they forced to get on code. 
because I, I, I got one video I will talk about um, next week that one of them having a hard time with understanding their position here in America. Because, see, you can other yourself all you want, but one thing them folks going to do, they're going to give you a good education <laughs> on what they think of you and what you are, and you're not going to escape um, – that anti-black treatment. And sometimes, you know, some people from what I heard resent that, or maybe even resent us at times because of that. But it's, it's not where you're from. It's your skin here. You know, when you're from it, you know, you, ju you judged on your, maybe your tribe or, um, what you do personally, or maybe who you know or whatever, but here's all skin color, baby. But you immigrated to this country and, and, and you should have got educated on it. You know, I tell all of you who are going to be coming to America, get your education about America, talk to black Americans and don't think black Americans are just what you see on TV. I seen a video out of Kenya the other day out. I, I literally wanted to throw my phone against the window when I was just driving. You had, you still have people in 2024 think Judge black Americans off of TV. Like really? I'm like, are oh, you that sheltered? They got Google and everything else in Kenya. I've been there multiple times, right? Been there a lot of times. They got the internet. So since I know they have the internet and Kenya's pretty modern, how come you still going on some, well, black Americans, I saw them on the movies and black Americans, I saw them on TV. Like, Black Americans go to freaking uh, Kenya all the time. And it was in Nairobi making that video. Like, my God, I can't stand. And I guess as I get older, I can't stand sheltered people because we live in an age where you, where no one should be sheltered at this point with the internet. It don't matter if you live in rural America and you're not around nobody. You should, you got the internet. You can actually research now and find out who people are, what, what they got going on. You know, trust me, I do it all the time. I research a lot. So I don't be a, a ignorant, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, especially what I do, you know, I don't want to be in that position. Well, Sue Wu, that's not true. That's not true because I've taken people to the African continent, um, several times. And so, no, that's not true. Um, is it now, if you want to say, do people think about it constantly? No. And I'm going to tell you kind of why they don't think about it constantly because one statistics say the majority of American citizens don't even hold us passports. We talking about American citizens. And then I, I saw the number that says only 5%, five to 7% of black Americans hold us passports. Now the majority of the country is about 30 some more percent, right? But black Americans, five to 7%. So the majority of black Americans don't hold U S passports. So how can they really think about traveling like that? If they don't hold the U S passport, I'm just saying like, we got to think logic and what, so why is it the majority of U S citizens don't even have a passport period? That's the thing. I mean, if you want to talk about it, you can talk about the folks, the majority of the folks don't think about going to Europe. Because they're so caught up over here, and then the way the economy is right now, could you really think about going to Europe if you are middle class and under, like right now? No, even if you're the folks. So that's why they're complaining, because they struggling the same way black folks are struggling. I, but, my, but you know how I feel about that. I don't know why, because y'all got a system that grades you on the curve. You can be mediocre and get with black folks and get diseducated. So uh. now, with that being said, Let's go ahead on and get into our regularly scheduled programming. All right. So let me cue this video up. And as you can see here, why black Americans can't enjoy Daddy December in Ghana. Now Daddy December is a time people have a good time. I know they do it in Nigeria too. You know, everybody's just having a good time. They partying, but this one young lady, um, she's Ghanaian but she's here in America. Now I'm gonna do like I always do. I'll play the video first. And then after I play the video, I'll start it again. And then I'll interject. Okay. All right. I'm 
actually really disgusted at the fact that some of you all traveled all the way across the seas to Ghana and all you did was party and go to the club. As a Ghanaian, I know, but like as a black, well-read woman, you should know that Ghana has such a rich history for you, especially being from the diaspora. And to go there and just pati pati and not go and see Elamina Castle, or how the locals are living or see how kente is woven is really like disgusting and disappointing to me. We should know as conscious travelers who are black and brown people, what it does to the infrastructure of a company when you do not support locals. And to just go and party at clubs that mind you are not even owned by Ghanaians is just kind of, you know, it's it doesn't really sit right with me. And if you're gonna go to a country like Ghana, like support it, like learn about the culture, it's beautiful. You just took that long ass flight with your three stops to get there, like why not? check out what's going on before the sun sets and so i just implore everyone who's going to be traveling to these indigenous countries and like to go out and explore and get outside of accra and see how locals are living and see what they're doing to support businesses and like get to know the culture because in turn like you're not appreciating the place and if you're gonna cut all you're gonna do is come to party stay at home like i, I hope ghana blocks the borders for y'all okay now I want to say before I get started, shout out to all my brothers and sisters in Ghana. Shout out to y'all. I know now one of my main editors is, is a Ghanaian brother, and I share with him this video. And we had we had a conversation we had a conversation about this video, right? So, like I said, I, I do talk to Africans in different countries. I got Africans that work with me, right? And um, we have great conversations about this. And 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 I'm I'm gonna lay the points out with her. Just most so I lay out the points with, with him at the time, right? And uh, we had a good build on, on this video. Now, let, let's go ahead on and, and start this over, and then we'll, we'll play it at certain points. I'm actually really disgusted at the fact that some of you all traveled all the way across the seas to Ghana, and all you did was party and go to the club. Okay. Why are you actually disgusted about black folks partying? I, I, I don't understand that. I mean, don't you party in the States? Why is that so disgusting? And and last time I checked, I haven't seen the majority of Ghanaian citizens saying, we don't want nobody partying in this country. We don't want that here. The government never said that. So why are you so disgusted? I mean, you're all right off the back, you're just hating. It sounds like that like Chris Brown say you hating outside the club because you can't get in. That's really what it sounds like to me, with you personally, man. A Ghanaian, I know, but like, as a black, well-read woman, you should know that Ghana has such a rich history for you, especially being from the diaspora. And to go there and just pati pati and not go and see Elamina Castle or how the locals are living or see how kente is woven is really like disgusting and disappointing to me. We okay, now. So you take issue about them not going to Elmina Castle. You do know how many videos is out on the internet of celebrities, people that's just working class people from America that went to Elmina Castle, broke down crying. We've seen so many of those videos of Elmina Castle. Not all the time, ma'am, somebody wants to go to the slave dungeon. Uh, look, I, look, I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you even me there are times that i don't want to think about slavery just at times i don't want to think about anti-black racism i don't want to be hearing about white supremacy i don't want to know about democrat i don't want to know about republican i don't want to hear about no biden no trump no democrat shields i got my times i need to get away from that okay and enjoy myself and then what, as I finish enjoying myself, then I come back and I can do what I need to do. Now, the, the killing part about it, then let me, let me show, let me show y'all something else. Put this up now, clear her off the screen. If you could see on the screen that this is, this is kind of like, you know, they enjoying themselves in Ghana, right? What is wrong with that? And there are white folks there. There are Asians there. They just enjoying their time. Caribbean people from the diaspora are there. Everybody's enjoying themselves. I don't take issue with this. I really don't. They're not committing crimes. They're not harming anybody. 
what's wrong with getting turned up sometime? Like, doggone it, where can we go to get, if we want to turn up, right? You know, brother right here, he, he, he turned up. This sister here, she turned, everybody turned up. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Now, something that's about to pop up on the screen, she said earlier, and y'all heard her. It's going to come, all right, right here. That's some black American brothers and sisters right there on that screen. Now, I, now let's let this play, and, and I, I want y'all to see where they at. Oh, look, they're where the locals are at, ladies and gentlemen, the locals. They're not shopping at the mall. They're about to go over there with the locals. And w- listen, I know my people. We always show love to the locals. I show love to the locals every time I, I go there. But let's let this play. Is a group of them going over there with the local people to go do what? Shop and spend money. Ma'am, it, it, it took me like five minutes to even find this. Five minutes. And you made a whole video hating on, on them, talking about they weren't even getting with the locals. I mean, like, come on now. I mean, but you talk about well read. This you didn't have to read to find this. They about to buy stuff, ma'am. Let me let me put her back on the screen up here. Didn't even take long for me to find it, right? How do you know they didn't go to the slave castle? How do you know? If they wanted to go, but but not all the time we want to go to the slave castle because it's emotionally draining. Sometimes we just want to go have a good time. Nothing wrong with the, with that, but let but let's let's continue with this, with what she's saying. Hold on, wrong one. Get to the right one, right video. Don't as conscious travelers who are black and brown people what it does to the infrastructure of a company when you do not support locals and. Well, we know she's not telling the truth there. To just go and party at clubs that, mind you, are not even owned by Ghanaians is just kind of you know it's it doesn't really sit right with me. Okay, so why is it the tourist fault who owns the clubs? Why is it black Americans fault about the clubs? They're not citizens of Ghana. You need to talk to the Ghanaian government about why they allowed uh, people there to own the clubs, right? Why don't you go talk to brother uh, Sam George? He's pretty popular in Ghana. He, he's, in, he's in the parliament. Go holler at Sam George and ask him that question. See if he could maybe do some changes. We can't do no changes over there, sis. Matter of fact, you can't do no changes because you're over here. You need to go to you back home to Accra and make that be your campaign to make sure all the clubs are owned by Ghanaians. Well, let's continue. Go. I mean, what are we going to do about it? And if you're gonna go to a country like Ghana, like support it, like learn about the culture, it's beautiful. You just took that long ass flight with your three stops to get there. Like, why not? Now that's some hating. Why you say with your with your three stops, right? If you don't know, United Airlines, ma'am, has a direct flight. I think from D.C. to Accra. I'm not mistaken. Some of y'all that went to Accra, y'all, y'all tell, talk to me about. Because I remember a United Airlines was talking about a direct flight. I think from D.C. to Accra. I think so. I know they got one from JFK to Accra, Ghana. So I don't know what she's talking about. Check out what's going on before the sun sets. And so I just implore everyone who's going to be traveling to these indigenous countries and like to go out and explore and get outside of Accra and see how locals are living and see what they're doing and support businesses and like get to know the culture because in turn, like you're not appreciating the place. And if you're going to cut, all you're going to do is come to party, stay at home. Like I I hope Ghana blocks the borders for y'all. Okay, and, and and that and to me that last part was more problematic than anything else. Now, sis, and like I said, this is this is this is out of love. This is no hate from me. Look, I have a lot of love for my distant cousins, and sometimes they wayward because they just don't really, you know. Sometimes, like like it's like what what the law has said, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's why I look at this with this situation. If she really go back and listen to what she said. So you want the Ghanaian government to block black Americans from coming to spend money. I don't know no country that will block a particular group of people to not spend money. I mean, do you realize your president 
spearhead of the year of return. Your president kept coming here over and over and over telling black Americans to go to Ghana. And then even with the year return, there was black Americans on that uh, planning uh, committee to even get the year return done. Okay. So it's people in the diaspora to help make that happen. Black Americans. So black Americans are going to Ghana. Black Americans are spending their money. Black Americans are patronizing the hotels, et cetera. Right? So you're talking about the local people and the hotels. Okay. Is if you can direct me or even just give me the information of the, the Ghanaian person that owns a Marriott over there. Um, let me know that way we can tell people, Hey, if you go to Ghana, go stay at this particular Marriott, because let's say a person like me, I have my Marriott Bonvoy account and I have my, I, I stay at a lot of Marriott affiliated hotels because of my points or an IHG affiliated hotel because of my points. I get my points. Sometimes I use them. Sometimes I get free stays. Like I said before, when me and my wife went to Costa Rica back in December, my first two nights there was free. Why? Because I had points. Okay. So if you know a Ghanaian that owns a, a Marriott, let me know. Right. You mentioned the restaurants and all of that. How do you know that brothers and sisters not saying, Hey, well, what a good Joe law fit. I want to try that. How do you know? You just run off at the mouth. I really, this is what I'm really think, sis. And it's not, it's not a good look. I think you really wanted to go to dead December and you could not go for whatever the reason. And you saw everybody, all the mother, young sisters, you know, enjoying themselves, turning up. And because you saw all the videos of them turning up and having a good time, you got, you know, kind of got in your feelings about it. Like you couldn't go back to your homeland and enjoy dead of December, but everybody else got to go enjoy it. And so now you kind of, you know, making excuses to hate on them. I mean, that's what it seemed like because it doesn't make sense. I haven't heard a bunch of Ghanaians locally complaining that they haven't been making no money because let me tell you about that. Every African country I've ever been to, the local people, they going to go try to get the bag. Yeah, they'll say, hey, brother, hey, sister, come on over here, shop with me. You know, like they trying to get the money. I remember, <laughs> I still laugh at some of these stories on the continent. So on the continent, you know, a lot of times you got to be in the habit of, well, we tip here in America, but you really got to tip there, right? Because a lot of times when people do something for you, they want to tip. Now, these tips isn't American tips. It's not American tips. Some of these tips that's great sometimes is equivalent of two dollars sometimes $3 in some places, a whole dollar. I'm just talking about equivalent and they happy with that. So let's say if you gave them equivalent of $5 and it translates into money, Oh man, they are really happy about that. Right? So if the guy is carrying your luggage, give him, give him a tip, right? Um, anybody who do any kind of service for you, give him a tip. Don't go there. I ain't giving y'all nothing. This, Cause one thing I do, I go along with the culture and what it is. I don't buck the culture because it's not my country. So I'm a see one thing about the white supremacist. I will tell you that they know how to get into a country and they, they flow very well with people's cultures. That's how they, that's how they colonize. That's how they steal resources. That's how they do the dirt that they do because they don't buck their system. They go along with them. Hey, if they dance in this way, that's what they going to do. If they wearing these clothes, that's what, that's why you see Becky over there with Kente cloths and, Becky with the, 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 the dashikis and everything else. And Becky having a great time because they know how to wove their way into those societies to get what they want versus some of us. I ain't doing that. I, bruh, calm down. Just enjoy yourself. When nobody telling you to do something immoral, just enjoy yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Some countries are more conservative than others. Okay. If they're more conservative, Ladies, you can't go out there with all your chest out if it's a conservative country. You can't go over there wearing them short shorts and all of that if you see it's a conservative country. You got to kind of go with the flow where you at. You understand? And, and people receive you a lot better. So I definitely go break bread with the local people. Hey, well, what a good food at? Like, oh, this, you know, you, you, you get with some people that's from over there. And, and they put me on, man. Like, okay, you're going to take, show me different things today. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to feed you. Cause every, every person that's been with me, 
that's been my, you know, guide, drivers, whatever, I make sure to feed them. I get because they already paid ahead of time. I still go ahead on and give them a good tip for me with me all day. Just to show appreciation. Because that's how I think about it. We as black Americans, our dollar exchange is very high. So I don't mind giving other brothers and sisters some good money. I don't mind even doing things like that here in America. I don't mind because God will give it back. I'm not tripping on that, but y'all have to y'all that want to hate on. I don't, it don't matter who it is. I ain't pointing out her in particular. It's just whoever. Cause we see that hate that come toward black America is from everywhere. It's not one group of people. It, listen, y'all have to get this in your head. Black Americans are going to travel. Black Americans are going to live their best life. We're not worrying with y'all. We're not stunting. No, we're not studying y'all. Nothing. We don't have time for that because what we have realized, always constantly worrying about people that don't like us or have an issue with us, it's a waste of time. It, it, it gives us an unnecessary headache. And after all that, y'all still going to feel the same way about us. So we're going to do us. Now, if the Ghanaian government say, hey, black Americans are blocked from coming here, then we address that in a different way. But the Ghanaian government has never said nothing like that. Even when I met the, the, the brother from Ghana, um, what, a year or two ago with the Diaspora Affairs Office, right? He was saying, hey, we want, yeah, we want y'all to keep come, Come on to Ghana, man. We, man, we, yeah, we got plenty of place for you, right? And that was a government official telling me that. So if that government official told me, nah, you black Americans, we don't want y'all over there, I I'll be the first one to come right here on this microphone and tell y'all, nah, don't go to Ghana, man. They don't want us over there. Don't do that. I, trust me, I, I'm not going to just pretty up the continent for you. I'm not. Just like some of y'all go over there and y'all trying to get land constantly and, and all of that. Look at how people in America feel when you, when other people come in here from different countries and just buy up a bunch of land. They take an issue with it, even here in America. Like the Chinese trying to get all this land in Florida had put in a law by banning the Chinese. Now some federal judge trying to overturn it. I just read, right? Texas want to, I think they either put it in or they about to put it in the law to stop the Chinese from buying land here. Right. Cause they don't want Chinese owning land. So not to say you couldn't own land, but even the way people go about it, know the laws, you know, I mean, just, just know the laws. Cause certain maybe, cause I know Ghana is a place from what I was told, maybe unless it's changed, you can't own land there. You know, maybe in some countries you can't own land, but maybe you can buy an apartment or a condo. I think you could buy an apartment or a condo, but land is a total different situation. And that's okay. Because when I when Kenya when Kenya was real hardcore about that, I asked him why would y'all prevent people from buying land? But then they explained to me why, and it made sense. They said because we were colonized, so to prevent the colonizer from coming back in and legally buying all the land, we say you can if you get the land, it can be on the leasehold. You can't fully own it, and that's to prevent the colonizer from doing it. Because that's exactly what they would do: is come up and just buy all the land, and now you recolonize all over again. So it made sense. I had a realtor in Kenya tell me that it made perfect sense what that sister said. Right. So, but even though, even though, you know, they still try to find their ways like Jamaica, Lord Jamaica, Jamaicans came and go on their own beach. I remember the brother in Philadelphia telling me about it. And then I watched a documentary on it yesterday. I'm like, wow, like they cannot access their own beaches in Jamaica. All these private companies then bought up the land and, and, and bought up the beaches, right? If they do access a beach, they got to go through the, all this jungle almost to get to the beach. And you got fishermen who always made their life by the water, got to go way out somewhere just to access the water when they used to just access in their neighborhood. And then on top of that, they will be putting in these Donald Trump walls, concrete walls, where they came and get on the so all the folks that show up to Jamaica on these resorts, they enjoying the beach all day long, but the Jamaicans can't even enjoy their beach in their own homeland because they their government sold them out. They sold all that land, so I understand why they said no, 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 uh, uh, you ain't about to uh, uh, own all this land over here. So sometimes some of us may get offended about it, but. 
when you start asking questions and, and finding out why, then okay. I'm like, and, and me personally, what about some of y'all that talk about land over there? I don't really want land like that. What I would rather is a condo. Because if I buy a condo, you wouldn't even know I had it. That's number one. Land, you know what I got it, right? And that land, I have to be there constantly. I have to, if I build this big house, I got to be there constantly. What if you type of person, you want to have something there um, while you stay there, right? But you don't want to be paying for a hotel. Well, well, shoot, what's wrong buying a nice condo or a nice apartment? You can own it outright. You can come and go as you please. Let's say you buy in a good area, good place, great security, and at one place I looked at in South Africa, like the Leonardo, right? That big old tall skyscraper one in uh, Johannesburg. They even do property management for you. So for a small fee, you could buy the condo, kind of do like a, it's almost like Airbnb with them. It's like a hotel, but they'll take care of it. They'll clean it, whatever. So you making a bag off of your condo, right? I mean, it's for fly. You make a bag off of it. And still come back to your stuff, right? So I look at it. I say, "Cool, that's like an investment," because that's like the first thing I I want to do on the continent is give me a con a couple of condos. Actually, that's what I would like to do. Hell, I would like some of them in America too, just just for certain cities. If I can, Lord bless me to get it, so I don't have to always stay in a freaking hotel. Yeah, man, Jamaica. That's, yeah, that's like apartheid. But you know, you can't say it's apartheid because they sell they they government sold them out. Them folks that come in and do and the Asians that come in, you know their port in Jamaica? They don't own it. The Chinese own their port. They literally sold it all. Like, I couldn't believe what that brother was telling me, the Jamaican brother I was talking to in Philly, the driver. When he told me all, he said, it's sad. And I say, well, are y'all going to replace these people? I said, why did y'all let that happen? He said, brother, we did not let that happen. Not the people. He said, we find out after we notice we can't get to our beach no more. We say, why can't we get to the beach? And then we find out that the government sold the land. He said, they didn't put that up for a vote. He said, all this stuff you see in Jamaica and other countries, we don't. You know, we don't know until it happens. And I had to think about in America. We don't know a lot of things until it happened either. Unfortunately, the governments of the world, the majority of them never think about the people. So I asked them, I said, well, hey, y'all thought about getting rid of the prime minister that's in Jamaica? I asked the brother. He said, yeah. He said, but this is the problem. The guy that's, the opposition party is worse than he is. I said, Oh God. I say, Oh boy. He, he said, the only thing he said about Jamaica, the brother said was, he said, it's going to come to a head though. I say, what you mean? He said, eventually people gonna get pissed and them resorts, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to burn down. He said, I'm telling you, he said, because you can't keep squeezing us like that. And Cause we see the resorts as the problem. They claim it's giving us jobs. He said, it's not, he said that we got, we got resorts in Jamaica, the brother said, that we can't even go to because we can't afford it. We can work there, but we can't afford it. I said, wow, brother. I was, like, I was just shaking my head like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's some real problems. And, and they keep that kind of stuff, you know, the hidden and things like that. And, and it just, it's not that the people keep it hidden, but I'm just saying so many things that these so when you see some of these brothers and sisters come over here and say it's the government, it, when I look into it, it is the government. It's not the people doing that crap. Now, we say at the same time, well, they should stand up against their government and they should do this and they should do that. Well, I mean, somebody can say that to us too. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people, the same, I always think about that. The same things we say to somebody else, they can say to us at the same time. So it's kind of like, you just shake your head about it. Like, bro, like can you imagine one day all the beaches in your state, you couldn't access them no more. You couldn't go to the beach at all. Cause it's owned by private companies. That's crazy. Um, James say she ain't no sister. Well, you know, to me, what she said was, 
I think this is a lot of hating or whatever. But I, I see, I won't cast her aside and, and say she's not, you know, I, I just don't, I don't look at it like that because at one point in time, I said some stupid things. I have. And I look back on it and I'm like, wow, why would I say that stupidity? Right. I give people time to grow. She's young. Right. So with young people, I give them time to develop. Now, when you are my age or definitely old, way older than me, you kind of set in your ways already. Not to say you can't change, but a lot of times you set in your ways. Cause, cause that's why I don't take great offense to what she said, even though I, I was correct you. She's not stopping anything. She has no power in, in, in Ghana to stop anything. She's not going to stop dead in December. She's not going to stop black Americans from going to turn over whatever that's what they want to. If black Americans want to go live in Ghana, she's not going to stop it. That's a, you always got to look at the end of the day uh, when people talk sometimes. It's like, okay, you saying what you're saying, fine. We respond to it. We let you know it's not right what you're saying. You're over here in America, right? I mean, we could have said the same thing. Well, you in here in America. Why didn't you go to the African-American History Museum in Washington, D.C.? Why didn't you do that? Hey, when y'all travel over here, uh, why didn't you go over to, to Bessie Mae's Soul Food? Why didn't you go over there? You didn't go check out the locals. Why you didn't go to Essence Fest when you was here or something? You know, I'm not saying Essence is like Fest like it used to be. I'm just talking in general. Why didn't you go? I mean, you know, I mean, you didn't go on top. We don't care about that. We don't care. We don't even know if you came here. We don't know if you left unless you did some sort of crime or something that was major on the news. I mean, so it's the same thing. But like I said, I just think she was hating because she couldn't go to Daddy December and she really wanted to go. I just think that's what it was. Pure FBA. I don't know what you're talking about. Cause I don't know what you're getting at by saying that. And what I mean by that is that, yeah, we have taken a stand, a much stronger stance than a lot of groups. You hundred percent right. But I don't know why you're telling me that. I mean, you, you kind of preach into the choir. Hey, man, look, we need some more Bessie Mays. I'm talking, when I mean by Bessie May, I mean Bessie May herself back there cooking. I'm talking about, look, I'm, look, I come from Port Arthur, Texas, okay? Port Arthur, Texas, when you get by Port Arthur and go further eastbound on I 10, that, that's when the food gets good, in my opinion, in Texas. The closer you get to Louisiana, the better food get. I would tell anybody, that part of Texas, Port Arthur, Beaumont, uh, uh, going all the way. Uh, I'm talking about to get to Lake Charles and all that. Listen, that's when the food gets good. People say, oh, the food good. No, no, no. Houston, mm -mm. Houston food's good. We've got a lot of variety, but when you talk about that food that make you want to slap somebody, you got to go to places like Port Arthur, Beaumont, going to Lake Charles, getting Louisiana. Cause listen, when, to me, I don't care what nobody say. Louisiana has the best food in the country, period. Louisiana, hands down. I, I will compare. Look, Louisiana got the best food, man. Best food. And we cooking it. Because if I walk in the store, look, I'm still old school. I'm like, look, nobody can cut my hair but, but, but a, 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 a brother. Now, I've had other people cut my hair because I had no choice. And it's not that I have an issue with people's, you know, ability or uh, community, but I'm just old school. I'm like, look, I'm used to brothers cutting my hair, and that's all who, who I'm going to have in my head for the most part is brothers. You know, I'm not a sister's cold. Okay, a sister. But I'm like, look, you should know the hair because we got the same kind of hair, right? Same thing with, I say, some soul food. I won't see black people cook it. Just beyond which, I'm not saying other groups of people can't cook it, but I won't see black people. If I go to a Mexican food spot, I want to see Mexicans cooking it. I want to see Mexicans doing it. 
I I don't want to see Jerome back there doing. I'm not saying Jerome can't make some fly Mexican food, but I want to see the Mexicans do it. That's their culture. You know, Chinese food. I want to see the Chinese people make it. You know what I'm saying? Why not? I mean, what's wrong with people doing things within their culture anyway? I like other cultures. I want to go get some good Italian food. Well, what are Italians at? I want to see them cook it. Nothing wrong with that. You know, okay, North Carolina. Okay, where you talking about North Carolina? Okay, what city got the best food in North Carolina? Is it Charlotte? Like, what what city and what place do I need to go in Charlotte? Do you tell me up field they got some good food? Because you know your boy Keith Lee ain't went to Charlotte yet, so but he definitely came down here to Houston, and Keith Lee liked a lot of food here in Houston. Oh, black eyed peas. Oh yeah. 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 Black eyed peas. The truth. I mean, listen, I grew up every day. You had some sort of bean every day. The reason why people these days are dealing with so much constipation issues. You're not going to the bathroom in a week or two is because you eat no fiber. And I'm talking about natural fiber. I'm not talking about going to get that freaking metamucil crap. Eat you some fiber and some beans. Plantains got fiber in it too. If you like plantains, boy, oh boy, let's talk about the plantains. Shout out, I mean, who makes them? The Jamaicans make good plant, good plantains, and the Costa Ricans, oh, they make some good plantains too. Wild and plantains is good in Costa Rica. They make it over, over with the rice too. But yeah, get you get you some fiber in your life. But we we ate black eyed peas. We would eat uh, pinto beans, uh, red beans, of course. Um, Man, my grandma would even throw down on navy beans. You got to have navy beans. You know that. My grandma would throw down on them lima beans. You like lima beans, man. My grandma would cook cook them lima beans so good. And, and and, And it wouldn't be that beans in the can. Oh, no, no, no. It's that beans in the bag. It's the bean in the bag. And... You know, balling them beans, cooking them beans right, put putting them putting them a uh, 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 ham ham hock in there, and then how many how many of y'all grandma had that pressure cooker? How many of y'all grandma had a pressure cooker to cook them beans? Them beans would come out so good. You say the black rice by the Haitians? You know, I need to go get some good Haitian food. I need to go get that. But uh, I was talking to my daughter the other day, and me and my cousin was on the phone. We were telling my daughter, my grandma used to throw down on them, on them barbecue turkey necks, too. I, man, my grandma put them, bar, uh, them barbecue turkey necks in that roaster pan, and uh, she'll, make, she'll make them turkey necks. And, um, boy, that, that meat would be falling off, of the, falling off the bone after she deal with, done with them, them turkey necks. And everything was with rice. Everything, it was rice every day. Some sort of rice, gravy. Now the gravy may come from the meat. Most of them come from the meat. So you know you have. That's how you had the barbecue turkey neck. So you got that gravy in there. You take some of that, put that on your rice. Got your beans, man. And 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 you know what? We all was real regular. Cause we ate some sort of bean every freaking day, and we went outside every day. We wasn't sitting in the house like we are now. And you're talking about okra. Man, my grandfather grew okra. He grew it. And um, my grandfather was so cold with growing that okra. And I'm telling y'all, y'all should, oh, I wish I was, wish he was alive and I could could have learned that. He would make a garden with a shovel, not a tiller. But when he's done with it, it looked like he tilled it all. And in the middle, he had them, them f- flat walkways in the middle. So uniform, and he always do it with a shovel. And he would he have his okra. He would grow watermelon. Because, you know, watermelon, black people was making a lot of money off of watermelon in this country. So much so the white supremacists got upset and tried to make that a negative so we stopped making the money off of it. Because, oh, I don't want to fool with no watermelon. I don't want to fool with that because, oh, you know, that's a, they teasing me. Like, we made a lot of money off of watermelon and fried chicken. One thing I'm not going to do is let no white supremacists prevent me from enjoying no food not uh, prevent me from going somewhere. No, but my grandfather, 
he would grow that watermelon. Y'all, that watermelon could be about this big and that big around. And he ain't had no fertilizer or nothing. He grew that all natural. And what he used to do, that, let me see if I got something around me. God, I don't have nothing around me that color. But my grandfather, his watermelon, with the the green, the you know, on the outside, the green, it'll be dark green. And I mean, in the inside, when you cut that watermelon, blood red. I mean, blood red. Blood red. Juicy as hell. The watermelon and heat that he would have. And for years, I was eating nothing but watermelon straight from the garden. You know, we get that watermelon. My grandmother cut up that watermelon, chopped that, chopped that watermelon up, you know, put it in that big bowl or whatever. She, she like throw a little salt in the watermelon. And man, we'd be sitting there, just, you know, especially them hot days back in the day. We'd come in, get us a big bowl of watermelon, be sitting there. But, we, but watermelon has seeds, okay? If you're buying a watermelon that has no seeds, it's GMO. My grandfather used to be like, hey, you know, save, save some of them seeds. Don't, 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 don't throw all them seeds away. And he'd take the same seed uh, that you, you threw, you, you know, put in a little bag or something. And he'd take that and go replant that same doggone seed out of the watermelon. And boom, he'd have them. And the same thing, dark green on the outside, blood red in the inside, and just juicy as hell. These, these watermelons today, I don't even eat them. I don't eat them. Cause they, cause how you will have a watermelon in the inside and it almost look pink. I'm like, and, and I tried that stuff. I'm like, man, this stuff's not even sweet. So like, how they mess this up? These people, these people mess up everything. These, these are uh, folks. They mess up. It, imagine you God looking down and say, I gave these people a beautiful planet, good food, good fruits, beautiful trees, great animals, and they literally didn't, didn't wipe it all out. That's, that's why the, the earth is getting so hot to keep them inside because they're destroying everything. Because listen, climate change is great for me. It's great for my people. We ain't tripping on no sun. We cool on the sun. We children of the sun. You know, if God really want to keep you inside, he'll make something happen where, where, where they have a severe shortage of sunscreen. Or the sunscreen to be a hundred dollars a bottle. <laughs> you really be staying inside then. I'll be outside. I'm cool. And then they 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 have convinced our people you need to be wearing sunscreen too. I never seen black people wear no sunscreen a day in my life. And I and I said, man, I'm not. I remember they told me that one time I went to a lady did a you know, doing some uh, skincare. So yeah, yeah, you put this sunscreen on. I'm like, no, I'm not doing, I'm not putting it. I'm not putting that chemical nowhere on my body. That's chemical. I'm not doing it. Sorry. Not doing it. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna be out in the sun when it's like the heat of the day and just cooking myself for nothing, but come on now. My people was enslaved for almost 250 years in the sun. How come the, if that's the case, all the slaves should have died off from skin cancer. They was in the hot Texas heat, Louisiana heat. My family was in on sugarcane plantations on both sides in Louisiana. How come I'm living the date in? By that logic, all my ancestors should have died off and I shouldn't even be here talking to y'all because of the sun. Yeah, we play. Yeah, Veronica, we play it outside. Like they say, you better be in here for these street lights come on. That that's that's really what it was. Never had no 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 sunscreen. I didn't know I didn't know what sunscreen was until I went to school. And we would go outside and we'll see the white kids, you know, putting on this sunscreen. I say, what? And I remember the first time I saw, I was like, what are you putting on? As a kid, what is that? Oh, it's sunscreen. I have to, my mom said I have to wear it. I say, what does it do? What well, prevents me from getting a sunburn? I say, what is a sunburn? I mean, I, I genuinely didn't know what a sunburn was. And, you know, they're like, oh, because if I'm in the sun too long, then it's going to burn my skin. I'm like, huh? 
you know, I, it just freaked me out that the sun will burn you. Right. And then I remember the first time I heard about lice. Okay. Now, of course, you know, in the Bible, they talk about the plague of lice and all of that, but, but you know, okay. The Bible. Cool. But when they would have these, these, the nurse doing head checks for lice. Right. And so I'm like, what the nurse checking for? And he said, lice. Like what is lice? Cause I didn't know what lice was. I mean, I grew up in a black community. Nobody I knew had no dog on lice. So they explain, oh, it's like these bugs that get in your head. And I say, huh? Bugs in your head? Why don't you just kill them? What's wrong with them? Why? How you let a bug stay in your head? Like, no, it gets a bunch of them in their head. It crawls. It is. I say, what? I didn't know what that was. I mean, the first time I seen somebody with that, oh my God, y'all. Oh man, that freaked me out to see, to see them things crawling this all on somebody. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Now y'all can say what y'all want to say about black people, but we don't be getting that. That's the last. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we had was mosquitoes. Yeah. Mosquito bites. You dog on right. Mosquito bites. That's it. Like, oh man, that's crazy. I'm the boy that lice. Shh. First time I ever seen that, 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 oh, it ran chills through my spine because to me, a lice, it looks like a cross between a, a fire ant and a spider. It's a weird looking thing. That's what it looks like. That's why I can kind of describe it. Oh Lord. I hope y'all know. I'm like, Oh boy. Oh no. They didn't check the black kids head. And cause, I, cause I'm thinking, shoot, I can get out of class to go to nurse office. And I'm like, no, not y'all just them. I'm like, why them and not us? Cause black people don't get lice. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was it. And then they will find them. They will find the, the, the one who had the lice and they get put out of school and all that till they get rid of the lice. Cause if one of them have lice and it becomes an infestation, oh Jesus, that's a plague. But you know, at one point in time in Europe, and you can look this up, they used to call lice the pearls of God. Look it up. The pearls of God, lice. It was a lot of filth in Europe until the Moors got over there like, man, what the hell y'all got going on over here? Like what? You're not taking baths. Well, you eating like like a. What are you doing? Like like they they just couldn't believe how they were living the Moors when they got over there. Now you talking about when they always talking about we brought civilization to blacks. No, that's a lie. That is not the story. The Moors brought civilization to you. Don't lie. And once the Moors civilized you, <laughs> and they already had civilization in the African continent. What are you talking about? It don't take that much to research history. Europeans was going to schools in the African continent, top schools to learn science, math, you know, learn history, learn all kinds. Like they, they were coming to the African continent to learn, but they want to lie to you and say, Oh, well, all the black people was swinging from trees and, 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 you know, It don't take that much to learn history, learn black history We're in black history month. Uh, and, and you know, I, I want to talk about that here for a minute for I wrap up black history month. We need to focus on the innovation of black America. You understand? We need to talk about our inventors because they label, they try to label black American culture as hip hop. And hip hop is a great creation that we created. But when you look at our inventions, that's our culture. You understand? So when you, when I was looking at some of the things that we have invented, even in recent history, right? I was like, wow, let me, let me, let me, uh, 
pull let me pull this sister up. Talk about this one sister real quick. And this is back in nineteen eighty eight. Uh Dr. Patricia. There she go. She popped right up. Dr. Patricia Bath, right? That sister. She um in nineteen eighty eight. She's all she's only uh how old is her sister? Well, she died in 2019. She invented a new invention for cataracts, right? Cataract surgery. So she invented a new device and technique for cataract surgery known as laser FACO. Dr. Bath was the first black woman to chair and say an ophthalmology residency program, even in the United States. She got that patent in like a 19, I think 88. Right. Um, but you can look up Dr. Patricia E. Bath. Look her up. When you look at her device that she created for cataract surgery that she had a patent on, that is black American culture. We need to start looking at our inventors. And when you look at any invention that we created, you say that right there is black American culture. When these people try to say, y'all don't have no culture. Um, do you got an automatic clothes dryer at your house? Most of you do in, in, in different countries. That's black American culture. Don't y'all do cataract surgery and don't y'all use her technique. That's black American culture right there. Open heart surgery, black American culture, the red light, black American culture, refrigerated trucks, black American culture. You got to label it as our culture. Because part of culture is your achievements. We can't just let the white supremacists relegate us just to the achievement of hip hop or jazz or some sort of music. And music is great. That's part of our culture. But also we have not only built America, we've innovated America. See, that's why they don't want to teach you your true culture. Because if they teach you your true culture, then white supremacy really couldn't work too long because they got to keep you feeling low about yourself and keep you thinking all thing you can do is hip hop and, and oh, you're, you just a gang banger and that's it. No, that's not our people. And that's the only, it's the only small set of people that's even involved with crime like that or the music industry. Every day inventions, when you teach your children, Say that's black American culture. Freedom fighting is black American culture. Everybody models their fight off of our culture, off of our models. Whether it's in the past or even recent, even when black Americans are fighting uh, by George Floyd in the way we did it, people want to follow that model. Black American culture. We have innovated the world and we should have no problem telling people that, especially telling the folks that our innovations isn't American culture. No, it's not. It's black American culture. And don't you let them people say, Oh, well, we all Americans. We, you always say that when it's time to give accolades to us. Madam CJ Walker was the first woman in this country, literally to become a millionaire. Black American culture. But they don't like to, they don't want you to know about that. But anyway, that will be a whole different conversation, different day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the stream. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you download the African diaspora news channel app. Make sure you do that in the Google play and Apple app store. Once you get there, uh, sign in, I'll get, I'll get a membership there. Choose monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Uh, we greatly appreciate you doing that. And those of you who have done it, um, we're trying to get to 10,000 members this year on the app. And we definitely, you know, want to definitely get there this year. Um, so thank y'all for listening and I got to go work on the podcast. And so on the podcast, we'll see y'all at 10 PM or 10 15. If, if something happens, it's interesting at the time.